Taylor Vitt, and Happy New Year, everyone. Happy 2022. So this year, I decided to do something a little different. Every year, I kick off my video lineup with the interior design trends for that particular year. But this year, I decided to do the outgoing design trends because last year, y'all was all over that. And I just want to send some big love out to my existing subscribers. <laughs> Thank y'all for returning for another video. And if you're new to my channel, I just want to send a big welcome to you as well. And if you're not subscribed to my channel or following me, you might as well do a new thing in 2022. Go ahead, push the button. So fam, just a little quick update. I have moved, I sold my townhouse, and it sold so fast, it gave me whiplash. It probably gave you whiplash too. It was not on the market for very long. I've now teamed up with my honey, and we are in the midst of renovating our house. It's about 25 years old, so throughout the year, you'll be seeing me do some videos on renovations. You should create your own personal style in your house, regardless of what's on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Pinterest. Let's go ahead and jump to today's video. Number one on the list of outgoing design trends are open shelves. <laughs> Didn't open shelves just become popular and now they're saying open shelves are already gonna be on their way out the door. I think open shelving can serve a purpose if it's done in a minimal amount maybe a bridge space and you decided to put some floating shelves there because you want to display some personal sentimental items or some decorative items that you really want to see. I'm okay with that. But to go in a kitchen that is void of all upper cabinets and only have open shelving, if you are thinking about doing that, you will be doing yourself a disservice. I was watching a TV show where they go in and uh, renovate these old houses, which a lot of the things that they're doing, ripping out stuff in the older homes to make way for the new, I'm totally not on board with that. And I'll talk about that in another video. But I saw on this show where they went in and they took out all of the upper cabinets. Matter of fact, they didn't even put them back in, but to save money, they did only open shelving. Honey, if you have open shelving, you're just asking for some company. Open shelving, as fast as it has become popular, it is on its way out the door. Oh, and let me say this. This year, just a reminder, I am just the messenger. And let me just remind everyone, don't be cussing or saying nothing ugly on my page in the comments or I'm going to block you. Number two on the list that is an outgoing trend for 2022 are open concept floor plans. Y'all know that open concept floor plans have been all the rage for years. Everybody wants to open everything up. And my townhouse was an open concept floor plan. One good thing about having an open floor plan is that you can see all of your sight lines. And if you have some kids or small children, you want to monitor them, then an open concept can be good. The con to having an open concept floor plan is everything is open. The kitchen is open to the living room, to the dining room. There is no separation of space or sound. If you have an open concept floor plan, then you just got an open concept floor plan. The house that I am in now, being that it is 25 years old, it's kind of a semi-open floor plan. It's not completely closed. It's not completely open, which I really like. People are definitely becoming very innovative on how they can kind of close off or sequester areas of the home and not have everything so exposed. If you have an open concept floor plan, keep enjoying your open concept floor plan. What are you going to do? Build a wall in the middle of the room? Don't really understand that one. Moving on to the next one. Number three on the list, the color gray. Gray has been hovering over our design world for the last decade. It is on sofas, colors of the wall, pillows, fabrics. It has definitely been a dominating color. And as you can see, I am sitting on a topish gray sofa. Will we be getting rid of our sectional that we spent a lot of money on? No. Will I be getting this sectional recovered? No, I'm not doing it. It works for my home. 
if you are still a love of gray, which I am as well, then try to go for some that have a little more brown or a little more muted because the palettes that they're moving to are a little more natural, a little more warm. But am I getting rid of our sectional? That's an absolutely positively no. The next outgoing design trend are white walls. Okay, we gotta talk about these white walls. What do I wanna say about white walls? I feel that any color serves a purpose and it depends on the situation. I hate it when they just give one thing overall and expect for people to kind of just follow along. You have to think about your individual situation because I am going to paint this room well. I'm not gonna paint it. I'm gonna have someone paint our two-story family room white. <laughs> and the reason why I'm going to have them to paint it white is because this room sits on the back of the house. And even though we have four windows in this room and it is two stories, it is a very dark room, even in the daytime. The only color that I would like to see to give this room some brightness is a white. Now, whites go the gambit of the color wheel. You can have a coffee white, you can have an icy white, you can have, there's so many different shades of white where you really need to look at whites in your home. You just can't go in there blind and pick a white color and say, okay, it's gonna work for your house because I don't have different undertones, but you gotta find the white that works for you. I would say if you're going to do white like I am, I would, maybe not just do a bare white wall, but try to come in with some type of molding, maybe some crown if you can, split the wall with a chair rail and something to kind of break it up. So if you have white walls, they are saying white walls are out, along with his cousin, the accent wall. I said that last year about that accent wall, but I'm about to do an accent wall. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I'm gonna do an accent wall in my new office area. I'm going to do it with some wallpaper. I've had this wallpaper, I wanna use it. I finally found a spot that I can use it in and I'm gonna use my wallpaper and I'm gonna create me an accent wall. If you wanna do your accent wall, do your accent wall too. If you wanna paint your walls white, paint your walls white because I'm doing it. I'm definitely gonna show y'all some videos on what happens when you go against what they say that's going out. Whew, moving on, number five on the list of outgoing design trends, gallery walls. I, I just did my gallery wall. I just did a, let me do the dog on. Can y'all, can y'all see? Can y'all see? Get my camera back right. Will I be taking my gallery wall down? No, I'm not. I'm not taking my gallery wall down. They said gallery walls with no personality. But heck, if you're doing a gallery wall, then it seems that you are bringing in some of your personality because you're doing a gallery wall. The area where the sectional sits was just an area that called for something. And it was a weird shaped wall. And all of the pictures that my honey had in other places that no longer kind of worked, I felt like I could keep them and group them here because they had a lot of color. Why get rid of something that's good that clearly was picked because he enjoyed looking at it and get rid of it. And I'm keeping my gallery wall because it does show our personality. Ooh. All right, number six on the list is fast furniture. Do y'all know what fast furniture is? Fast furniture is equivalent to I keep everything. <laughs> and I'm not bashing Ikea because I myself have Ikea furniture. <laughs> Hold on, I told y'all, I'm the messenger and we are in this together. Furniture in the box. I got several pieces that are furniture in the box. Our coffee tables, matter of fact, I bought one coffee table and it was too small for this area so we bought another one exactly like it and I had to do some assembly because I couldn't find one that I felt was affordable that looked the way I wanted to look in my price range so we ordered two fast furniture pieces but they look pretty good the other thing of fast furniture that I have are my bookcases from Ikea and they work perfect in my office now I'm gonna do a little something different to kind of make them not feel so out of the box but they're saying fast furniture is out. And I have said this for a long time. 
good furniture pieces are not disposable. So all of y'all that didn't get rid of all your old antique pieces from your grandmama, from your aunties, uh, from your other family members, and y'all have gotten rid of that stuff and just given it away instead of holding on to these beautiful treasures. <sighs> You're probably rethinking some things now. I'm not going to knock a person who has fast furniture. If you have fast furniture, if that's what you can afford, then that's what you can afford. But think about future purchases to just save up a bit more money and to buy pieces that are truly investments. The action that I'm sitting on is an investment. We did invest in a high quality sofa, or he did, because I went with him when he picked it. I helped pick the fabric in sectional and all that so y'all need to stop throwing away all this good furniture and replacing it with stuff that is very cheaply made sorry Woo! number seven on the list it is making a second debut and that is shiplap y'all i saw it everywhere and i said it last year and if you did not see my outgoing design oh. trends for 2021 i'm gonna link it right here but let's talk about this shiplap again I told y'all this shiplap has been running its course the same way the color gray has been going. It's been going for a minute. At some point, everyone gets tired of it and they're looking for something new. Shiplap is definitely one that's on the hit list. But if you've done all this investment into your home and you absolutely love your shiplap, keep your shiplap. Don't let somebody tell you that your shiplap is out of date. But if you feel that, you know, you want to change before you go in and rip out all of the meal work that comes with shiplap, maybe try painting it to give it a different feel. It doesn't have to be white shiplap. It could be shiplap in another color. Shiplap is hanging on by a thread. Whew, moving on to the next one. And I know somebody is going to leave a nasty comment behind this one because this one is making a second debut as well. And that's barn doors. I said it last year, barn doors are out. But let me say this, it is about the barn doors. Again, they can serve a purpose when you don't have the space. Every home is not humongous. And when you are in a tight space and you need some privacy, sometimes a barn door, I don't even want to call them a barn door. Let's just say an exterior floating door. You need one, just like we do. And house is 25 years old. They made a water closet. It's in a little room with a toilet in the master and there's no door. It's just a big opening. So, that means if I'm getting ready, there's no privacy for him. If he's getting ready, there's no privacy for me. What sense does that make? Sometimes a little separation during certain times, very much needed. We were thinking about putting up an exterior floating door. <laughs> I don't call it a barn door. We want to put a door up. And there's no room to have a swing in, swing out. We can't do a pocket door. The walls are already up. The only thing that we can do if we decide to put one up is a barn door. No, an exterior floating door. Now, what they're saying about barn doors are that the doors are now becoming more intricate in design, more elevated, more um, architecturally detailed so that it doesn't look like a barn door that is going into the stalls. But we need one for our stall. We need a door for our stall. Again, don't listen to them. Ooh, number nine. Now this one, some of this stuff I just don't even understand. And this one is placing your TV over the fireplace. Obviously, these people have homes where they can make decisions and move things around freely. But sometimes your home will dictate that is the only place that you can put your TV. Matter of fact, in my town home, they had an outlet and a port, everything ready and wired because they felt that that's the only place she's going to be able to put her TV. And I did. I had my TV above my fireplace. If you want to keep a streamlined focal point of your fireplace with your TV above it, because you don't have the space, then keep your TV above your fireplace. 
it kind of goes along with the trend that was going out with the microwaves above the range. Like, if my kitchen is only so big, where can I put my microwave? Well, that is the reason why your space needs to work for you. In our space, we don't have the TV above the fireplace. I do have a mirror. But the only other place that we could put the TV, you have to walk in front of the TV to get to the staircase. Bad traffic flow. I said that in the video. And this house is set up for just a bad traffic flow, y'all. There's nothing I can do about it. I have tried to design in my mind 25 ways to nothing. And it is just no room. But we'll make it work. Finally, number 10 to round out the outgoing design trends. Excessive pillows, trinkets, and tchotchkes. Mm -mm -mm. Now, first of all, let's talk about these excessive pillows. I am a lover of pillows, y'all. I make them. I have some videos where I made some pillows. I show you how to make a pillow with a zipper. And if you want to do something different in 2022, go check out some of my old videos. You know, that was a plug. That definitely was a plug. But if you have so many pillows on your bed that it takes you 45 minutes to get in because you got to knock all these pillows off, just stop it. Stop it. You don't need that many pillows. Nobody needs that many pillows. And the same thing for your sofa. You got so many pillows on the sofa that you can't even sit down. Don't do it. The other thing that's going out are all these itsy bitsy trinkets and tchotchkes. Oh, Lord. And some of y'all got all these little trinkets here, there, and everywhere, all over the place. I, and I'm going to say, I think I'm kind of going into that pot of being guilty of having all these trinkets and tchotchkes because I do have quite a bit of decor pieces that I didn't even realize I had until I moved, y'all. Oh, my God. I had to put some stuff in storage. I couldn't get one big storage. I had literally one storage that was, there's nothing but like almost decor pieces, tchotchkes, small stuff. I already told Andrego, that's my honey. Then I'm going to go ahead and go do a yard sale. And I'm going to get rid of some stuff. I need to pare down, y'all. We probably all need to pare down. But if your house is looking like your grandmama house, your auntie house, your great aunt, well, they got something on every surface. A trinket here, a trinket there, a trinket everywhere. If y'all are like my mama, she can tell when something been moved. She, you can go to my mama's house and she has her stuff in a certain way. She can tell if something has been moved. I, I just, I don't even understand it. What was Kathy Bates? What was the movie? Misery. Remember when he came, he rolled out and he knocked one of her little trinkets down, one of her little tchotchkes down. Ended up with some broken legs. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all, don't give somebody some broken legs because they been messing with your tchotchkes because you need to get rid of some of them. Just, just do it with me. I can do it. I, I can do it. I, I think I can do it. We can do it. We can go on this journey together to get rid of some of this stuff. It's time. New thing for 2022. So y'all, that is it for the outgoing design trends. We did see some return visitors on this list. So you getting a whole second chance to get your act together in 2022. I thank you for coming back and spending a little time with me. I hope to see you back for some of my upcoming videos. I got interior design trends for 2022 coming out, kitchen and bath trends, color trends, and a few other things that I haven't done before. So hopefully y'all can tune back in. And until the next video.